my name is H.A. Pruitt and this video is going to be me doing my cover design for book two of Anna Thalian. Um, it's going to be a bunch of different videos put together but I'm just starting on it and so here's the start of the video. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is because I want the book covers to be consistent is I'm going to trace my original first book cover design to make sure I have the right shape of the necklace the right shape of the curve for the title and um, I may just kind of space to where I want my name and so I'm going to use my gigantic tracing paper to do that. To make my second book cover I first got out my original painting for my first book cover and traced over it to keep the dimensions the same and then I flipped the tracing over and traced over it with a charcoal pencil. The purpose of that is so that I could transfer it onto the mat board without um, making any indentions onto the mat board. And so I also traced the other elements of the book cover, the necklace, the title, and my name in case I needed them for any purposes. Tracing them would allow me to do whatever I needed to with them later in the process. So then I cut them out. Then I got my mat board out and I just used my fingers to rub the charcoal onto the mat board. And then, since I could see it, I was able to paint the outline of Ella's necklace onto the mat board in copper paint. So I just got my first layer down to make sure I got the shape on there. After that, I used green paint to paint in the center of the necklace. And I used acrylic paint, and so it was kind of hard to blend. That's why I had a little bit of trouble with it. But, um... Once I got down the initial layer of the paint, then I could add water to it. I didn't want to add water to it initially because I'm doing the painting on matte board and matte board absorbs water horribly and will bulge if you get it wet. But once I got the first layer down, I was able to use my extender. Then I traced the other components onto projector film because I'm going to use a projector to project them onto the matte board. But as you can see in the video, that failed because my projector bulb was almost burnt out. It did burn out and my husband figured out we needed a new bulb and he ordered that. And in the meantime, I worked on the necklace some more. I worked on the exterior um, perimeter of the necklace and I wanted to add texture to it because each necklace has a different texture to it because they're all slightly different. And so I... Um, used my acrylic paint. I like acrylic paint because you can layer it and create physical texture with it. And so that's what you see me doing right now, creating texture with the copper paint. Then next, after we got the projector bulb in, I was able to project the title and my name and the dragon onto the mat board and draw it on with, again, charcoal pencil because it can be erased easily later and so I was able to get all of my elements on there. Then I was able to go in and do the first layer of paint for the title and for my name. You gotta do several layers of paint just to build up and get the sheen and get it completely opaque so there's no places where you can't really see it later. And I got my dragon, the first kind of little layer of my dragon. You can see he's not fully on there right now. But then I do go back and I paint in just the first layer with just plain copper paint, one color, and get the shape in first. And I used my projector film to help me see the shape since I couldn't get it fully on there with the charcoal pencil from the projector. I did another layer of paint on my name and on the title just you know, good housekeeping there. Make sure you do layers and layers and layers every time you get a chance. And so then, what you see in my hand is a kneaded eraser. A kneaded eraser is an eraser that doesn't leave any eraser marks and doesn't leave any eraser um, little scrubby thingies behind. And so it was very good for erasing the charcoal pencil and it did erase very easily. So next, I went back in and I mixed a darker color. I used the green that I used for the gem of the necklace, and I used the copper that I used for the dragon. And I mixed those two together to make a dark copper 
because they're complementary colors and so they would blend well with the copper of the dragon so I could do the shading of the dragon without deviating from my color scheme. And I also use that color to paint the darker spots on the necklace itself so it kind of pops more off the mat board. And then next what I did was I went back and used that darker color to paint in all the little tiny details of the dragon and make sure I got all the shading and all the toenails and the eye painted in and just make sure that he looked really good and um, I also used some just plain brown and the paintbrush I'm using is the teeniest tiniest little paintbrush because I love teeny tiny paintbrushes. I love doing little tiny details like that and um, it was really fun for me to do that and then I used my teeny tiny paintbrush to go over and do my final layer of the lettering for the title and the lettering for my name just to make sure because the kneaded eraser picked up a little bit of the paint and took off that sheen and that sparkle so I wanted to make sure and get that back on with my last layer. So the last step on my cover is to paint on the chain for the necklace. Um, I paint on one side and then the other so I have time for one side to dry while I paint the other. And that way I can just build up texture, physical texture, rather than just um, the appearance of texture. And that just gives it another level of texture, another level of interest. And so it turned out really good. I really liked it. So what I did after I finished painting my necklace was I took pictures of it. I took pictures of it in different places because I wanted kind of a vignette around it. And so I tried different lighting situations. I tried outside. I tried by certain windows. I tried turning it different ways. Um, and when I finally got the lighting on the necklace part and kind of fading into black, I adjusted it some more so it looked like I wanted it to. And that's what I wanted it to look like, what it looks like in the pictures. But I ended up changing it to be more like the first book cover. Um, and so you'll see that next. Hey guys, so this video is probably really bad lighting and you probably hear weird things in the background because um, my husband is taking care of our four foster children right now so I can get a little bit of work done. It's been, it's like, it's April 17th to 16th, I don't know what day it is, it's April 16th or 17th today and it's been like a month since I've gotten to work on my cover at all because of all the stuff that's changed in the past month. Um, on April 1st is when we got the foster kids. So as I show you what I'm working on, I'm gonna kind of explain what I'm doing and the technical part of it. So watch the hyperlapse video and hopefully my voice will be loud enough for you to hear it. So here you go. So this video doesn't show everything that I did for my cover, but I did get quite a bit of it. What I'm doing that you're watching right now is I got Paint Shop Pro 2021 and I have that program on my computer and I took, you saw I took the pictures of my cover and then I put them on Paint Shop Pro and I didn't know what to do at first but my husband figured out that you can do a flood fill and um, so he did the flood fill of the background and he filled in as much of that brown background as he possibly could without um, getting too close to anything because he's not real artsy or detail oriented and so um, he left the very fine details to me which is what I'm doing in the video. I'm going back and zooming in like as close as I possibly can and I'm using the paintbrush tool to go around every part of the necklace and my name and the title and filling in all that extra um, background that doesn't need to be there and just leaving the picture and my necklace and it was it took a while, but as I did more, I got better at it, and it looks really good because of it. And so that's what I'm doing. And I had to repeat that process later after I readjusted and made it bigger. Um, I made the necklace bigger twice, and I moved the title and my name twice. After The second time was after I got my proof copy. And um, so that's what I'm doing right now in the video. I'm moving it, you see, and then I had to fill in again after I moved it 
And to move it, you use the select tool and you select a free form around the title and then you move it with the pick tool and then you fill it in with the paintbrush tool. So that's what I did there. And then that's the product I got the first time around. That's what I came up with. And it looked really good just standalone by itself, not on an actual book. And so I ordered my author copy and then that's the spread of it. And that's my author copy. I ordered my author copy and I saw that the necklace was kind of small and I wanted it just adjusted a little bit. And so then that, what you see now, is what I did after I adjusted it. And um, of course, I filled in all the back side of the book before I got my author copy. But there's a comparison of the before and after of the author copy and then what I adjusted afterward. And again, I use the select tool, select the title and the necklace. I enlarged them with the pick tool. Um, and then I filled in and again, I had to go back close up and fill in all the little tiny details around. And I also um, made a couple sharpen passes over it. And so those are my books together. Don't they look nice together? And the last thing I want to say is when you upload it to KDP, first you have to make it into a PDF and then you upload it to KDP. And that is when I uploaded my own book cover. If you just do the cover creator and get rid of all the extra stuff, that is so much easier, so do that. So that is how I made my book cover from very beginning to very end. It's been a long time since January and right now it's July when I'm taking this end part of my video and I get to hold my second book, Earthquaking Anathalian Book 2, in my hands. Um, so now I can look at Anathalian and Earthquaking side by side. This is the cover. This is the final cover. This is the book. And now you can go buy it on Amazon. Um, please do. I'll put a link below. So if you have any questions about my process of creating my cover or you just have any thoughts, please do um, leave some comments below. Tell me what you thought of this video. Tell me if you've made a book cover and how you did it, if it was different or if it was similar in any way. Um, I'd love to hear your comments about book covers or about my book cover if you like it or not. And, and again, please do read and um, buy and read Anathalian and the second book in the Anathalian series, Earthquaking. So thank you very much for watching. Bye! If you want to know more about Anathalian or H.A. Pruitt, please follow me on Instagram at H.A. Pruitt. You can find me on Amazon as an Amazon author, H.A. Pruitt. Please watch my YouTube channel and all my cool videos on my channel, H.A. Pruitt Anathalian. You can find me on the Facebook page, H.A. Pruitt Anathalian. You can follow me on Goodreads by the name H.A. Pruitt and the book Anathalian. Or you can go to my website where so much cool stuff about Anathalian is. The website is hapruitt.com.